When rookie Brian Bellows signed on with the Minnesota North Stars, he was given number 23. That was Louie Nanny's old number. And when asked why Louie Nanny said, well, I didn't score many goals, so there are a lot of goals left in that number 23. Louie Nanny talks with Bobby Orr on Hockey Legends tonight. Welcome to Hockey Legends. You might not recognize me. I'm Lou Nanny. Gordy Howe, Bobby Hull, John Bellabo, Phil Esposito, Stan Mikita. What am I doing here? They became legends by going around me. Tonight, from Jamaica, the legend of Lou Nanny. <laughs> you finished juvenile hockey at the Sioux and then the University of Minnesota. Why did you choose that run? Well, kids weren't going to college at that time uh, if they were pursuing a hockey career, but basically I never let myself think that I was going to be in the NHL. My folks really encouraged me to get a college education. They figured that that was the most important thing, and that's why I went to the university, and John Mariucci gave me a scholarship in Minnesota. Four years ago, we started seeing a great number of university players in the NHL. Do you think that trend will continue? Yes, Bobby. The percentages each year are going up of the kids drafted out of college, and uh, many kids right now are really interested in getting a college degree and playing hockey. Lou received his college degree and as a naturalized U.S. citizen went to the expansion Minnesota North Stars where he played for 10 seasons under seven different coaches. Nanny also served as the team representative to the NHL Players Association and sold advertising space in the North Star and NFL Minnesota Viking programs. He was always listening, always learning. Would it be safe to say that the greatest joy of your career uh, has been international hockey? Oh, I probably until the finals this year, the Cup, but the uh, 68 Olympics was a big thrill. I can remember vividly uh, getting beaten by the Russians 11-0 the week before. We had played them and held them to one goal loss, and uh, also against Canada in, in the Olympics, 3-2 uh, we lose. I had the puck all on the front of the net, and Roderick stopped me with 15 seconds to go. We were a big score, Lou. <laughs> And in 81, you were the general manager for Team USA in the Canada Cup. That's right, Bobby. And that team uh, was, I think, the finest collection of uh, hockey players the United States have ever put forth. And it just goes to show you how much progress they've made fundamentally. They skate exceptionally well, pass the puck very well. The only thing the U.S. is lacking right now is a big goal scorer, someone like Abbasi. I was very, very impressed with your uh, 81 team. Were you at all uh, surprised by their performance? No, Bob. Actually, we, uh, we only lost the two teams, Canada and, and uh, Russia, and we gave them good games. And we felt going in that we had a chance to uh, be as good as anybody. That just shows how much those kids have really come along in the last five years. In 68, your first contract with the Minnesota North Stars was very unique. Tell us a little about it. Well, Bobby, uh, I was coming out of the business world, and they didn't know whether or not I'd play or how long I'd play, and I wanted a great deal of money. and. Uh, in order to get it, I had to do other things. So I signed a personal service contract. Do you think this helped you become a complete general manager? Definitely. I, I think that uh, a manager has to know marketing. He has to know uh, per, uh, public relations work. He has to be involved in all phases if you're going to be successful because we are in, in the entertainment business and we've got a product to sell. And it gives you an idea of how the other departments really work. Do you make more money being a general manager? Huh. <laughs> yes, I didn't make very much as a player. <laughs> you were getting it all. <laughs> At the end of his playing career, Lou was providing vital leadership to the younger North Stars, a talent that Minnesota management hoped could be continued in a promotion to the front office. When the announcement came, it came quickly. In 24 hours, you went from player to general manager and coach. You obviously had a game plan uh, when you took over the team. Uh, what was that plan? Well, I, I figured that uh, we had to build quickly by the draft. I was hoping that we'd end up with the first pick. We were in last when I took over, and, and we did. And uh, I thought that we had to improve our defense and our goaltending. Uh, we were very lucky to emerge in the offseason with Cleveland, so we got Milosh that immediately picked up our goaltending. And we, we made some uh, selections in the amateur draft, and in the next two years it really improved our defense. What changes do you think are necessary in the NHL? I would uh, get fighting out of the game. I, I know that that's uh, against the grain of many people, but I really think that that's in the best interest of the game because athletes are disciplined. They have to be disciplined in order to become professional. Uh, they don't allow football players to fight. They don't allow basketball players. And if they take fighting out of the game and say our players can't fight, I think it's going to speed up the game and make it more interesting and exciting. There. I've been to many games, and I've heard... Uh, people, the fans yelling, Lou, Lou, Lou. <laughs> I really think it's boo, boo, boo. That isn't true, and nobody really knew. <laughs>
<laughs> the Minnesota North Stars won't win the Stanley Cup this year, but it may not be too long before they do. Lou Nanny wants it that way.